future territory. Mr. Speaker, uh, apologies. Um, Mr. Speaker, I rise on behalf of New Zealand First to speak uh, um, to this legislation, and I, I intend to take a short call because I note, despite the variation of the theme, uh, most of us, or all of us actually in this House, um, actually support the legislation. So, my first observation is uh, the Minister came, in, came into the House to um, speak to the first reading, and genuinely, sir, she looked quite sad. She, she looked sad and she spoke in a very sad, sad way. But one can only assume that she chose this portfolio. But it was quite disheartening. Mr Bishop, for example, and Mr Bailey are quite exuberant when they speak about uh, tax legislation on behalf of the National Party. And actually, there's a lot to be proud of uh, for once uh, from uh, the National Party with regards to new legislation. I do want to touch on what's wrong and what has been missed out, the opportunity that was not taken, Mr Speaker, and I speak specifically, and I uh, use the example um, because it's a very important one, of the Chinese Premier who came to New Zealand several years ago. And he spoke specifically to uh, the ruling party here, the national government, and said, we need your help. And what he was referring to, sir, in reference to that assistance, was specifically around, uh, in his case, Chinese criminals who had um, stolen funds, uh, appropriated assets illegally, and they were, those criminals, were bringing them to New Zealand because New Zealand was, and I posit, is still a place to hide assets. According to China's own numbers, New Zealand was at the time, and this is only a few years ago, Mr Speaker, uh, uh, harboured 11 per cent of their top most wanted criminals in this space, 11 per cent, New Zealand all by itself. And so the assistance was around, we need to close up these loopholes. Too many of our people, um, people uh, from overseas, uh, were coming to New Zealand and using uh, the uh, foreign trust laws, the trust laws around accountants, lawyers and real estate agents to literally hide money. And at the time they were using um, other, other methods as well. So New Zealand First agreed completely. And um, we posited and put it to uh, the national government that they needed to act quickly and promptly to close up these loopholes. They knew what to do. We gave them oh, my apologies, we gave them our suggestions. They took nothing on board. And I do have to say, actually, it is with some genuine surprise that what, three quarters of the Shewan report was taken up by the government in this legislation. I, I have to say, I was genuinely surprised at the vigorous nature in which it was um, written in to the um, bill. I say that because the Prime Minister of the time stood up in front of the country and not only said there is no problem here, look away, he actually suggested and insinuated that an attack on international companies using New Zealand as a way to hide illicit funds was an unpatriotic act because we were compromising a $24 million legal industry. It was appalling. It was absolutely appalling. And hence my genuine surprise in my participation in the FNE Select Committee when I saw genuine efforts being made to take on the recommendations from the Shewan report. And so it is with that particular reference in mind that I do congratulate the government for being vigorous, thorough in doing so, but they haven't gone far enough. It's been spoken to several times tonight. There is still, Mr Speaker, a gaping hole, literally, in our legislation that allows uh, the same individuals, the same international corporates, the same criminals to use New Zealand as a way to um, hide money, to launder money even.
So we still have that problem. And uh, New Zealand First will do something about it if we're in a position to do so later in the year. But, sir, uh, perhaps I did claim I would give a short contribution, so I move to uh, what has been positive uh, in this legislation, and that has been mentioned by the um, speakers from the national uh, side of the House, and that has had to do with the AIM component of the legislation. Now, it's kind of like uh, who said it first, but we have a, um, quite a strong history of watching Labor um, take verbatim our policy, and this is no exception. And then we have a strong history of watching National claim to not take anything of ours and then kind of corrupt it and degrade its uh, potential impact in the process of hiding the fact that they took it from our policy books. And I speak, of course, with reference to something that uh, we have been trying a long time to lobby this government on, and that has been uh, around the uh, new AIM legislation, ensuring that uh, that pay-as-you-go, as it were, uh, component of this legislation was there so that sm small business can carry on um, in a much more pragmatic and straightforward way. Um, there will be a few issues on uptake, but again, in the legislation, uh, we do have some good aspects around um, some of the big uh, accounting houses with the uh, cloud software being able to act as uh, intermediaries and support agencies in that process. And I, and I genuinely believe uh, small business will be better for it. I genuinely believe that because it was New Zealand First policy. I um, tried the government for taking so long in uh, bringing it to the House, but here we are now, uh, nearly nine years later, and I'm sure small business is uh, applauding uh, this decision. So, uh, in, in conclusion, sir, in the main, a good piece of legislation with uh, full support from the House. And uh, we've got a few more steps to go, but here we are, and I congratulate the government on this legislation.